Yes, Madam Chair, Salamat. Go ahead, please. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, speaking of the special interests of other countries that uh, the Chair mentioned earlier, and I'd like to thank uh, the good Chair for her understanding, I'll go first to uh, cybersecurity risks from state actors. Um, so uh, these are questions for the ICT uh, or DND. Uh, the internet now enables a wide range of, in, of functions vital to society and the economy, uh, energy, transport, banking, health, the industrial control systems. Democratic and administrative processes such as regulation and elections are also expected to rely more and more on digital infrastructure. But uh, I'd like to ask our resource persons, what is your assessment of the threats to our internet infrastructure posed by states or by state-backed actors. What states, particularly potential adversaries or rivals, maybe interests in the Philippines, um, what states uh, have the capacity to mount these types of cyber attacks? Madam Chair, will it be the NSC to reply? I, I yes, see. why don't we ask um, Thank you. Secretary Esperon, maybe, Secretary Esperon, in, in response to the question of Senator Monteveros. Good morning, um, Good morning. I hope uh, I hope you hear me. Yes, Good sir. morning, Madam Chair and uh, the Senate President and other senators who are uh, present in this uh, hearing. Uh, May I inform the committee that uh, I was actually a member of the oversight committee that formulated the uh, memorandum circular number 0909-2018, which uh, actually served as the rules by which the DTOC telecommunity was eventually gr granted the opportunity and privilege to improve telecommunications uh, services throughout the country. Uh, there were four members of us. Mr. Secretary and Madam Chair, uh, if I may, I'm, I'm not yet asking a particular question about DITO, but I'd really appreciate if the Secretary could shed light if the memorandum already included that threat assessment to our internet infrastructure by states or state-backed actors. And if the good Secretary could identify to the committee which are these we we are aware of uh, the possible threats. Uh, we know that uh, in cyberspace, uh, there are uh, third country operators or unknown uh, hackers who could always uh, disturb our uh, systems. And so uh, it is for that reason that uh, I saw to it that uh, a clause was included in the NTC memorandum. Uh, uh, we know that there will always be some uh, third party uh, third parties that would be interested in our telecommunication systems and it is incumbent upon us to also be on guard against this so we prescribe this uh, uh, for the as the co-chairman co-chairman of the national cyber security interagency committee or NSHA, uh we have already formed uh, technical working groups for telco, for the uh, national ID uh, system, as well as for the NGCP. And, and we might even have to come up with uh, other technical working groups in the name of uh, cybersecurity. Yes, good secretary. And speaking particularly of the telcos and what the secretary mentioned about hackers and technical working groups, are you tracking the activities of state-sponsored hacking groups targeting the Philippines? For example, those sponsored by the Chinese government. Uh, we are not uh, just targeting uh, those sponsored by Chinese, but in general, mm -hmm. we are doing that. Uh, uh, when the administration came in, uh, when, the un when the arbitral uh, uh, award uh, was uh, came out, there were a lot of hackings that uh, we experienced. Uh, many government offices uh, were hacked. And uh, we could only pinpoint the sources of, of this. It may not necessarily be China, but uh, they could be located in other countries. Uh, uh, 
that is uh, that is the kind of threat that uh, we face in uh, cybersecurity. Yes. Uh, and so and so today, we even have our cybersecurity group in the armed forces, uh, while we have this uh, national cybersecurity interagency uh, committee, uh, chaired by by the executive secretary and co-chaired by. Uh, Secretary uh, Honasan as the ICT and me as a national security advisor. In a bit, Secretary, I'll also have some follow-up questions about the armed forces. But for now, just in connection with the previous question, uh, is the good Secretary aware that a China-based hacking group codenamed Nikon, N-A-I-K-O-N, has been quietly carrying out a five-year <laughs> cyber espionage campaign against Asia-Pacific governments? including Australia, Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, Myanmar, and Brunei? Wikipedia. Well, yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we, are, we are aware. I'm not, uh, I, I do not know the particular name, but uh, we should take lessons from, from Mr. Snowden, uh, Wikipedia. We know that they, many states or third party or... Uh, their proxies or even terrorists have the cap capability to do that. Mm. That is why it is really very important that cybersecurity uh, should now be uh, a practice, a policy, and uh, something that we should all be doing uh, in all government agencies as well as in uh, private corporations. Exactly, Secretary. So really, are you also I'm, tracking? I'm sure of that. We should group. be doing that. Yes, sir. Are you doing it? Are you, uh, as far as Wala. Nikon is concerned, are you monitoring? I cannot hear uh, the uh, um, Senator Hontiveros, uh, Madam Chair. Can, can the good secretary hear me? I, I think it's the connection of the secretary because I can hear Senator Hontiveros loud and clear. Thank you, Chair. Uh, please please check your connection. Sir, you're Secretary, can you hear me now? Sir, it's not a connection to the no, secretary. It's Nikon, Madam Chair. It's always ironic, no? I mean, the ones that are actually important uh, speaking at the time is the one that wouldn't have the connection. Um, secretary Esperon, I think a message is being sent out here. Yeah, uh, there is a group, uh, Nikon, really, uh, that targets not only the Philippines, uh, yes. but has been reported to be targeting uh, some uh, companies in Australia, Indonesia, yes. Vietnam, Thailand, and, and others. Uh, there's really some kind of a cyber war that's uh, ongoing. Uh, we do not know all the players, but uh, it should be incumbent upon us to adopt uh, cybersecurity measures. Well, uh, Secretary, I'm, I'm sorry yes, um, if I may interject, Senator Hantiveros. So, Secretary Esperon, there, there is the threat. If something happens, what is the mechanism we have in place? Who are the people in charge? I know that DACT is supposed to have also uh, individuals assigned uh, to keep track of uh, possible national security threats. So please elaborate because we know that there's a threat, but what? how, how are we going to address it if it actually happens? Ano gagawin natin? Will we shut down the system for a few hours? Uh, how, how do we do it, sir? At saka, uh, Madam Chair, limang taon na po itong uh, cyber espionage campaign ng Nikon. So, I think we need to hear more from NSC than general statements about cyber threats in general. It should be incumbent upon the companies to also employ their uh, to to comply with the uh, with the uh, national cyber security plan. Uh, uh, and, uh, Secretary, I so yes, para iniiwan natin, iniiwan natin sa mga kumpanya na sila dapat ang no, maging... uh, not, not, not only that. That's why we need to fund the DICT uh, so that we could, they could have uh, an operations center for lawful intercepts. So right now we don't have that. Uh, we don't have that. We don't have that. That is why we need some funds for that, uh, for the ICT. Lawful. We do have funds for the DICT. In fact, we increased it. Uh, may, may I ask the DICT to comment? We will get back to you as Secretary Esperon. Um, but we need to hear from the DICT. 
di ba meron kayong cyber security group? Ang NBI meron din, pero I know it's poorly manned. Uh, there's not that many um, individuals assigned to that. So the DICP, can you can you speak with regards Madam, to national security? Madam Chair, uh, Attorney Omar Sana again, Madam Chair. Um, we have a cybersecurity bureau, Madam Chair, which uh, coordinates with the uh, different uh, government agencies as regards cybersecurity. Is this under the DICT, Attorney Sana? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, give me an update on the cybersecurity bureau. How many people do you have there? What is your budget? Um, do you have a progress report? Um, Madam Chair, unfortunately, um, I am not aware of the details of the cybersecurity bureau, they are located in a different office from our central office. Well, so I, I try to call them to appear in this hearing. This is the problem. We're talking about the franchise of Vito Telecommunications. One of the issues being brought forth, and I think fairly, is how do we protect ourselves knowing that a certain percentage of ownership is owned by a foreign national? Thank you, How sir. can the government assure us that they've given a fair assessment of the safety to our sovereignty if we don't even have a proper cybersecurity group that does the assessment? So, I mean, listening to Secretary Esperon, uh, they're drafting this and that, but, but when it comes to the actual uh, mechanism in place, should we have a threat? There's really no plan. So, paano natin masasabi na safe tayo? Wala naman pala tayong ma masasandalan na mekanismo para malaman kung tayo ba iligtas o hindi. Anyway, go ahead, uh, Senator Lisa. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Could I also ask the DICT then, Attorney Sana, uh, are you aware of at monitor na ba ng DICT itong limang taon, no? kalahating dekada ng uh, cyber espionage campaign ng Nikon laban hindi lamang sa mga kumpanya na sinabi ni Sec Esperon pero laban sa mga Asia Pacific governments um, again, uh, Yes Madam Chair again personally I'm not aware uh, I can contact our cybersecurity bureau and uh, get back to you with the uh, information if you will allow us Madam Chair Please do uh, kasi I would have expected that uh, since it's a very disturbing phenomenon that's five years running, na medyo kahit hindi yung unit directly in charge of it sa DICT, med medyo sa department level aware uh, at alam. And since uh, earlier, uh, Attorney Sana, Sec Esperon, uh, corporations, well, I am going to ask, uh, in, since we are, as the chair said, talking about the franchise of Dito, so it's one of the corporations, concern po, ta po, po talaga, uh, among others dito sa Senado, na 40% nagpagmamayari uh, ng Dito uh, ay isang kumpanya which uh, I believe is acting as a proxy of the Chinese government. Kung tama po yung teorya ko, uh, Attorney Sana, by allowing a proxy of the Chinese government to set up a telecommunications network in the country, as well as facilities within our military bases. Sa tingin po ng DICT, wouldn't this be tantamount to letting state-sponsored hacking groups get one foot in the door? Madam Chair, I'm, uh, Madam Senator, I'm sorry, uh, I, I'm not equipped with the facts but to be able to comment on that mm -hmm. i really if you want we can provide a detailed report on the matter you okay. ask our involved please units for. please do attorney sana madam chair there may be another resource person uh whether that would be the dnd or the nsc again who would um, like actually if you, if uh, i may suggest senator Montiveros, perhaps we we can have also an assessment from engineer tito gala with democracy.net um, what his assessment is with regards to the progress report given by the NTC, but maybe uh, Engineer Gala comment first on the issue at hand, which is the national security aspect of our telecommunications sector. If, Thank uh, you. Would you be able to comment on that, Engineer Gala? Uh, Madam Chair, thank you for having us. Uh, 
In 2019, the Department of Information and Communications Technology unveiled what is called the Cybersecurity Management System Project, which is supposed to be a security operations center. It was supposed to service 10 agencies initially, the DICT, the Office of the President, the Department of Finance, Department of Energy, Department of Foreign Affairs, National Security Council, Department of Budget and Management, Presidential Com Communications Operations Office, National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, and the Department of National Defense. But it seems that uh, because of the lack of mention of, our, of this security operation center, maybe it's not running. Maybe it is uh, an expensive paperweight that uh, we, we thought of setting up, but we are not really operating it because we're not getting any reports. Uh, supposedly, the best practice, the international best practice of such security operation centers would be to publish monthly or annual reports on how many, uh, how many threats have they uh, defeated. We don't even have to discuss who are these threats because there are technologies to mask where the threats come from, but we at least need to know uh, where the, uh, how many threats have attempted to attack these, for example, initially these 10 agencies and perhaps uh, other agencies as well. Engineer, now, what, what is the name again of that, uh, that group in 2019? The Cybersecurity Management System Project. Hindi ko, hindi ko man alam yan. Ano may acronym ba yan? Is that the one that was mentioned by Secretary Esperon? Uh, Cyber no, Madam Chair, it is not. This but it's a government, it's a government uh, initiative, right? Yes, ma'am. It was. Who, who is uh, heading it? Do you know? It used to be. It used to be headed by uh, by by Engineer Alan Cabanlong, who used to be the DICT Assistant Secretary for Cybersecurity and Enabling Technologies. I Engineer Caba Cabanlong. Cabanlong. But, okay. but he is no longer with the uh, DICT, and I am not aware of who is the point person in charge of this except to say that this project would have to fall underneath the the cybersecurity bureau of the DICT. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, sir. There are more questions for the DICT later on then. Go ahead. Uh, just to wrap up, ma Madam Chair, uh, in the cybersecurity industry, we know that it is uh, inefficient to perform brute force attacks. Meaning, if you know that it's already protected, why will you attack that wall or that gate? Instead, you go through areas that are not yet protected, such as uh, agencies that are not yet subscribed to this project, or even the connections of the LGUs. So suffice it to say that uh, we might have a project because there has been such a report in the DICP through a press release in their own website, but we do not know if it's actually operating because we do not have any quite, uh, monthly, quarterly, or annual reports whether or not uh, uh, we are actually defeating any threats or that have been attacking these 10 agencies that have been enrolled. Uh, just, just that for now, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney Gala. Are you aware, is democracy.net.ph aware about this five-year uh, cyber escape. I'm sure it's engineer, not uh, attorney. I am, I am not a lawyer. Engineer Gala. Sorry. So are you aware of this uh, hacking group codenamed Nikon that's been conducting cyber espionage against not just corporations but governments in the Asia-Pacific region? Madam Chair, in fact, uh, the, 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 the Nikon group was identified not by governments, not by, not by a government agency, but it was in fact... Uh, uh, identified by third-party commercial, uh, third-party commercial entities such as Trend Micro, uh, Kaspersky, and such like that. These, the fact that they are commercial entities, do not take away from their credibility. So, it, so this report is just merely one of the many reports about state-sponsored uh, APTs or. Uh, 
uh, active persistent threats, as they are called, meaning these are either states, uh, nation states, non-nation state actors, including terrorists, who may have this capability. ISIS has been reported to have this kind of capability as well, although it has been limited by states such as the United Kingdom and the United States, who have their own uh, cyber, cyber groups designed for this purpose. Uh, just to wrap up, Madam Chair, there is a significant difference between what is called cybersecurity and cyber defense. In the Philippines, we, we talk a lot about cybersecurity, including how cybersecurity is folded into national security, but there has been no conversation much about the concept of cyber defense insofar as the Philippines is concerned. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Engineer Gala. That's very interesting. Wala pang uh, conversation, let alone official conversation about... I think what, what Engineer Gala is trying to say, wala tayong preventive, di ba? Pagdating sa defense. Uh, may I volunteer, Madam Chair, may I volunteer? That uh, Secretary... Uh, se with the indulgence of Senator Montiveros, maybe allow Se Secretary Esperon to comment. I can say that uh, the def defense part of it, cyber defense, is actually being performed now, at least in the cyber group of the armed forces of the Philippines. So we have that standing unit now, cyber cyber group. So, it's sir, in the in the armed forces of the Philippines, how many individuals are manning the cyber defense group? There should be about, uh, I would estimate there will be about 40, which is uh, led by a Navy captain. And and do we have, uh, do you remember what budget uh, we have pending now for approval for that division? They're asking for some equipment, by, but I think uh, they did not get all of it. Uh, they're getting some of it. Uh, I understand the National Defense and Security Committee uh, uh, was trying to help them also with this. Uh, okay, um, can uh, Secretary Esperon, may, may I ask for a report on the structure of the cyber defense unit of the military um, and, and also a report on the 2019 cyber security group, uh, of which I, I believe you may have been a member or you are a member of? I am, as I said, Madam uh, Chair, the co-chairman of the National Cybersecurity Interagency Committee. So may, may we ask for a report from you to be submitted to our committee, please? And then, uh, Engineer Gala, would you like to interject? You have a, a quick comment on this before we continue with Senator Antiveros. Okay. Yes, Madam Chair. I realize that uh, this might not be the committee that should be discussing this. Perhaps it should be better a move to the National Defense Committee of the Senate. But there really is a distinct difference between cybersecurity and cyber defense. There are principles in cybersecurity that apply across the board, whether government, uh, private sector, and the critical infrastructure that has been identified in the National Cybersecurity Plan. But I will point out that that, that is the National Cybersecurity Plan. When it comes to cyber defense, that's different. That's a doctrine reserved to the military and the national security uh, apparatus of government because not only is cyber defense about cyber, there is a kinetic aspect to that. And uh, this, I'm sure the military, uh, our military stakeholders know very well, but there hasn't been any uh, public reports on what is the cyber defense posture. I will uh, emphasize that cyber defense posture of the Philippines. That's, that's it, Madam Chair. I, I hope that it will be discussed in uh, the relevant committee. Thank you for differentiating that and introducing us to the term, the, the kinetic aspect of it. So the movement aspect of it, Madam um, Chair. if I'm not mistaken. Um, Senator Risa, before I call on to Senator Pangilinan, would, would you like to continue? With permission of Senator Ontiveros, just a quick manifestation. All right then, Madam Chair, and then I will uh, come back. Thank you. Okay, I, Senator Pangilinan is recognized. Yes, just, just a manifestation, Mr. Uh, Madam Chairperson. A lot of the, I, uh, the issues being discussed have uh, serious implications in terms of national security. Uh, perhaps the chair may consider uh, at some point uh, calling on an executive session 
so that we can discuss uh, very sensitive national security issues. Um, and we will be able to discuss freely. Uh, a case in point, uh, Madam Chairperson, is that the United States Department of National of uh, Defense in June 2020 released a list of 20 Chinese companies that have direct links to the People's Liberation Army. And one of those 20 is China Telco. Uh, and, and so uh, we, that, that is my manifestation. It, it uh, may we request perhaps to consider uh, at some point that we have an executive session to discuss the very sensitive national uh, security issues uh, surrounding uh, these latest developments uh, and the approval of this uh, franchise, Madam Chairperson. Yes, the, the suggestion of Senator Panginan is uh, uh, noted, and I think, yes, eventually we will call for an executive session. But I would also like to remind our guests today that whatever company is set up in China, they have an obligation to their national government to report any information that the national government will request from them. So, in short, meron silang pananagutan na ibigay lahat ng meron silang impormasyon tungkol sa kanilang mga transaksyon. So, kung kung anong narinig nila dito, pwede nilang, ad, ay, dapat nilang i-report doon sa kanilang gobyerno. Anyway, that's moving forward. Later on, we are going to ask, uh, we're going to do a checklist of the accomplishments of dito communications uh, because the national security issue is another issue with the government and, and perhaps uh, we, we can deal with that uh, extensively in another hearing. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you, so, Senator. Uh, yeah, yes. Senator. Thank you, Senator Pangilinan. Senator Pantiveros, please continue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, katabi nung uh, pagdi-differentiate ni Engineer Gala sa cyber security at cyber defense, at katabi nung word of caution uh, ni Senator Kiko, gusto kong sabihin in relation especially dun sa huling observation ni Engineer Gala, precisely dahil pinag-uusapan natin ang cyber security pa lamang in relation dito sa franchise ng dito, pero may aspect ng cyber defense na mukhang baka mahina or pinanghihina nito. So it actually undermines the cyber security and also the cyber defense of our country. And possibly ito yung punto ko through, uh, through dito or more particularly through China Tel na binanggit din ni um, Senator Kiko. A last question, Madam Chair, for Sec Esperon at this point in time. Dahil hindi po nasagot ito ng DICT kanina. Sec, binabanggit nyo kanina yung mga korporasyon and the one that we're focusing on right now for its franchise is dito. By allowing a proxy of the Chinese government, na yun po yung teorya ko sa China Tel, by allowing it to set up a telecommunications network in the country, as well as facilities within our military bases, hindi ba ito katumbas ito na pagpapayag sa mga state-sponsored hacking groups na magkaroon ng isang foot in the door dito sa Pilipinas? Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, if we talk about proxy of uh, China, uh, and if we are referring to uh, foreigners who are in our uh, telco companies, let us be aware that uh, Globe is not 100% uh, Filipino company. Globe has Singtel as a partner, Singapore. Smart has uh, another foreign partner, uh, uh, okay. which is uh, Indonesian. Uh, of course, Dito, as we know, has a Chinese partner. But all three companies uh, are in extensive use of uh, Huawei, which is uh, a very hot subject of the trade war or economic war between the United States and, uh, and China. But uh, let me just say that uh, equipment are another thing, intent is another thing, and protective capabilities are another thing. That is why we have... Uh, cyber security cyber defense is also another thing uh, and uh, that is why we don't talk about it uh, in the open because a lot of these things are classified so there are many instances where we may not talk about them openly and i am glad that senator 
Pangilinan has suggested that we go on executive session, but this time uh, I think uh, it is in the Senate rules that uh, since this is uh, security, uh, I think uh, not the other committees might have to be involved. Uh, oh, Dr. Kadari, let's talk about intent then. Let's talk about intent of China. Yeah, with due respect, uh, Senator Hontiveros, I really appreciate your raising the issue of national security, which is paramount. I can see Engineer Gala sort of disapproving with his uh, facial reaction on the on the comments of General Esperon, uh, Secretary Esperon. The thing is, let's try to wrap up. Uh, not wrap up, but um, we have to go to the other submissions and other requirements being asked of the Delco applicants. We should have definitely another meeting, hearing on the national security aspect. But Engineer Gala, uh, when Secretary Esperon mentioned something that this is something that cannot be explained publicly, um, I think you and I, if, if I if I have your opinion the same, I think that if I interpret it right, would expect at least a minimum discussion on the, the general makeup of the cybersecurity plan. So oh. what, what was your comment, um, Engineer Gala? Did, did no, you have I, something to add? Let just clarify. That, is that is correct, Madam Chair. Uh, at the very minimum, we don't want to discuss operations. Operations must be discussed in executive session by trusted individuals of the Senate of the national security apparatus of the country. They should not, uh, the details of operations, if if at all possible, must be kept as part of the national security secrets of the country. That being said, uh, there is no publication by the Department of National Defense, nor of the AFP, with regard to what is our cyber, cyber defense doctrine. That's where it all begins. What is the doctrine with regard to cyber defense. We have one for air, we have one for land, we have one for sea, we used to have one for space. The fifth domain of warfare, being cyber, does not yet have an official published doctrine by the DND, only that it is part of something that we should defend. That's the one-liner mostly that is being discussed, but it's being folded into cybersecurity, which uh, is not supposed to be the case because cybersecurity in the main is something that protects uh, individuals, people who use ATMs, people who want their uh, personal identifiable information protected, which is why we have a National Privacy Commission. But cyber defense is something different entirely. It involves not just the act, not just uh, the interception of messages, the use of espionage over cyber means. It also involves the movement of troops if they need to, for example, take out a cyber terrorist. This is what it means. And uh, based, on, uh, based on the bare minimum, as you said, Madam Chair, there has been no publication of what is the Philippines doctrine. That should have been the minimum, but it's not there yet. Uh, Thank you. In defense of in defense of the DND, the DICT, and the NEC, medyo bago kasi. Malamang inaaral pa. But we have to move faster. We need to establish the doctrine very quickly so that it, we will have oper interoperability over all our forces and our national security apparatus. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Engineer Gala. Um, Secretary Esperon, would you want to have a quick comment before we go back to Senator Montiveros? I, I Sir, your your speaker is on your volume. Uh, indeed, uh, I'm very glad that uh, Mr. Gala is uh, coming out with this. Uh, but you know, uh, communication security or SIGEN, uh, signal Intel intelligence, had long been with the armed forces, and this is this was all the start uh, of this all. So we have a lot of uh, people who have been into this. Uh, just that we don't we don't discuss this openly uh, operations especially uh, especially now that uh, terrorism has uh, has come to us so there are operational matters that we cannot discuss openly 
uh, there we will have uh, of course manuals uh, later on uh, in the same manner that do you know that the national uh, security policy was published only in 2016 for the first time and the national security uh, uh, strategy was published only uh, in 2017 we are doing this uh, for the first time we are coming up with with all these things because there are a lot of things that we have to share also with the public. It used to be, uh, if, you, if you hear something, uh, just leave it when you leave. Now it's different. We have to share a lot of information uh, in this age of uh, the fourth industrial revolution. So okay. bear with us. Uh, we are willing to share it with, uh, with you, especially with your committees, because uh, in the end, this will serve us better. If we know it, uh, especially that we also need to spend for our cyber security and our cyber defense. Uh, look at the figures that have been shown by the Commission of the, uh, Cordoba. All the other countries are spending so much on it. And here we are. We have a DICT that could only be given. I don't know what you have given the ICT, but I think it's only five billion. Uh, that is a lot less than what is required. For cybersecurity, much more for protecting our databases. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Secretary Esperon. Yes, we will look forward to a more extensive discussion on national security, uh, perhaps partly as an executive session, and then later on we can uh, uh, present to the public at least the bare minimum of our cyber defense uh, strategy. All right, um, Secretary. And then later on, we will have a short manifestation from Senator Bongo. Um, Senator Hontiveros, can we wrap up a bit on the national security? And if you have other questions, ma'am. We'll do. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Two points, and then I enumerate ko yung mga tanong ko pa sana for, for the next round. Uh, one, uh, kay Secretary Esperon, hindi po... Uh, parallel yung mga halimbawa ng Globe at Singtel at saka ng Smart at yung Indonesian investors nila dito sa kaso ngayon ng franchise ng dito na may Chinatel na 40% uh, owner niya because neither Singapore nor Indonesia have similar uh, intelligence and espionage laws tulad ng China which as the chair also mentioned, requires its nationals and its companies working abroad to uh, collaborate on intelligence and uh, on their uh, home countries. At uh, ang Singapore at Indonesia ay hindi rin, halimbawa, nasa national grid natin at hindi rin natin katapat sa uh, West Philippine Sea. Secondly, uh, Madam Chair, um, napaka-importante nung isang sinabi ni uh, Engineer Gala na kailangan natin at wala pa tayong cybersecurity doctrine. So all the more, dapat itong pagbubuo ng cybersecurity doctrine ay hindi na uunahan uh, ng isang uh, uh, Chinese government or yung Chinatel sa loob ng isang franchise uh, ng dito kapag ka unresolved pa yung mga important issues being raised not just about cyber security, but indeed about cyber defense. Uh, and lastly, for this round, Madam Chair, I put on record ko lang yung mga tanong ko for the next round. Uh, they would have to do with uh, Chinese information warfare strategy as it, uh, I think, potentially will affect us here in the Philippines through this uh, franchise. Uh, next, Madam Chair, questions on, well, cyber security risks in general. And then uh, the last two questions on, uh, more broadly, the recovery of unused frequencies. Uh, tulad ng isang uh, bill na nakahain ko, I'd like to seek the opinion of DICT on that. And then also the dispersal of ownership clause present here in the um, Dito franchise, but also present in other franchises. Uh, all for me for this first round, Madam Chair, at marami salamat po. Thank you. Um, Senator Lisa, if you can um, submit also to our committee a copy of your questions and we will forward it to the pertinent departments so that if we have another, they can, number one, submit to you ahead of time the responses and then you can have a follow-up in our next round um, specifically on national security.